Hi, I'm Emily, a high school art teacher with a passion for nurturing creativity. Before I continue, please like and subscribe for more stories from my life. Today, I'll share a pivotal moment that reshaped my family's future. Justin needs to be in a place that pushes him, where he'll meet the right people. It's about setting him up for life, Emily. Jack's voice filled the kitchen as he tapped on the glossy brochures from elite universities, his fingers drumming a relentless rhythm on the table. I sighed, my eyes on a humbler brochure from an arts college, vibrant with painted canvases and sculptures. But what about what Justin wants? He's passionate about art, Jack. Shouldn't he be happy too? Jack scoffed, his gaze sharp as he glanced at the art brochure like it was a poor joke. Happy? He'll be happy when he's successful. You're too soft on him, Emily. You're not helping him by letting him think life is just about doing whatever feels good. His words stung, and I felt the familiar frustration bubble inside me. I knew Jack cared about our son, but his version of caring was so wrapped up in his own dreams of success that Justin's happiness seemed secondary. Success doesn't come from pushing someone into a life they don't want. What if he resents us later for not letting him follow his passion? I countered, my voice steady despite the rising tension. Jack leaned back, his expression one of disbelief. Resents us? He'll thank us when he's not struggling to make ends meet because he chose a practical career. We're his parents, Emily. It's our job to think about these things. I shook my head, my heart heavy. It's our job to support him, to help him grow into the person he wants to be, not the person we think he should be. Jack's laugh was bitter, echoing slightly in our kitchen. Grow into the person he wants to be? What if he wants to be a painter? An artist? You really think that's a stable life? What kind of parent would I be if I encouraged that? Frustration flared within me, my hands clenching into fists at my sides. A supportive one, Jack. You'd be a parent who respects his son's dreams. Not everyone needs to live life the same way you did. You're the reason he thinks he can just be a painter, or some nonsensical dreamer. What next, Emily? Are we going to support him forever because he wants to find himself? Jack threw his hands up. His face was flushed with frustration, the vein on his temple throbbing visibly. Maybe, Jack, if it means he doesn't lose himself in your ambition. I responded, trying to keep my voice calm despite the hurt that was welling up inside me. Lose himself? It's about giving him direction, Emily, something you seem to care very little about. Direction is one thing, Jack. Dictation is another. He's our son, not a project you can manage. I'm his father. It's my job to make sure he doesn't end up a starving artist or some street performer because his mother was too indulgent. Jack's voice was harsh, his eyes glaring intensely at me. And as his mother, it's my job to make sure he grows up happy, not just successful by your standards. He loves art, Jack. Why can't you support that? I pleaded, my voice breaking a bit as the emotional toll of the argument began to wear me down. Because I don't want to visit my son in a rundown apartment, wondering when his next meal will be. Is that what you want for him? Because I sure as hell don't, Jack countered, standing up to face me, his presence imposing. I believe in him, Jack. I believe he can succeed, even in art. Why can't you? My question hung in the air, heavy with the weight of countless similar discussions that had left us both weary. Because I live in the real world, Emily. I've seen what happens to dreamers. They get crushed, and I won't let that happen to Justin. Jack's tone softened slightly but his stance remained rigid. Maybe the real world has changed, Jack. Maybe it's big enough now for dreamers, too. I suggested softly, hoping to reach some part of him that might still remember his own once-upon-a-time dreams. Not on my watch. Not while I'm responsible for him. I'm setting up a meeting with the dean from the business school. He'll see sense when he hears it from someone other than us. And if he doesn't? What then, Jack? Do we just keep pushing until he breaks? I asked a sense of dread settling over me as I considered the possibility of Justin being crushed under the weight of our expectations. He won't break. He'll thank us later. Jack insisted, turning away to look out the window, his posture one of finality. I left the room quietly, the sound of my footsteps swallowed by the thick tension that hung in the air. Upstairs I found Justin in his room, sketchbook in hand, lost in his art. Watching him, a surge of resolve filled me, I would fight for his dreams no matter what it took. Morning next day. I'm doing this, Dad. I'm going to study fine arts. Justin's voice trembled slightly but held a firm resolve. 
He stood in the living room, clutching the acceptance letter from the art school. You call this a decision? This is a betrayal, Justin. You're throwing away your future, our plans, everything. Jack's voice was thunderous, his face red with fury. It's my future, Dad. I want to be happy, to do something I love. Justin replied, his stance defiant yet weary from the ongoing battles. Happy? Do you think life is about being happy? It's about security, success. What you're doing is selfish and foolish. Maybe to you, success is money and status. But to me, it's about being true to myself. I won't spend my life regretting I didn't follow my passion. Justin's voice grew stronger, bolstered by the conviction in his heart. And you think I'm going to support this? Finance this? This hobby? Think again. Jack snapped, pointing an accusatory finger at Justin. I watched silently for a moment, the weight of years of discord heavy in my heart. Jack, stop. You're only pushing him away. Can't you see that? I'm teaching him discipline, Emily. If he goes down this path, he's on his own. Jack turned his glare toward me, his anger palpable. I sighed, a deep sorrowful sound that filled the space between us. And if that's your decision, then I can't stay and watch this. I won't watch you destroy what little is left of our family. So what, Emily? You're going to leave? Over this? Jack's voice was incredulous, almost mocking. Yes, Jack, because this isn't just about Justin's career. It's about respecting our son's choices, his happiness. I can't stay and be part of this destruction. My own decision startled me in its clarity as I spoke. That night, as Jack raged on about wasted potential and thrown away futures, I packed a bag with trembling hands. In the cold light of dawn, I wrote a note, leaving it on the kitchen counter where Jack would surely see it. I can't let you destroy him. I won't let you destroy us. The fallout was immediate and painful. I filed for divorce, a step as freeing as it was heartbreaking. With my unwavering support, Justin applied to his chosen art school, his face alight with a hope that had been suppressed for far too long. Thank you, Mom, for standing by me, for believing in me when it felt like no one else would. Justin's words were a balm to my aching heart as we filled out the application forms together. Always, Justin, I believe in you, and I believe in your future, one where you're not only successful but truly happy. I smiled, feeling the first stirrings of peace in what felt like an eternity. As Justin stepped into the light of his own future, I prepared to step into mine, uncertain but hopeful. The decision to leave was laden with sorrow, yet there was a promise of renewal, of starting anew where respect and love could flourish without the shadow of unyielding expectations. Watching Justin from the doorway of our new, small but bright apartment, his sketch pad in hand, and a soft smile on his lips. I knew that despite the challenges ahead, we had made the right choice. In that moment, I felt a fierce pride and a protective love for my son that fortified my resolve. I was wrong, the voicemail echoed in the empty room, Jack's voice cracking, uncharacteristically humble. Please, let's try to fix this. I listened to the message in the quiet of our small new living room, the phone heavy in my hand. Beside me, Justin sketched quietly, his brow furrowed in concentration. I glanced at him, my decision firm. We can't go back, Justin. Not after everything. I deleted the message, a symbolic gesture more for myself than for Jack. I know, Mom, it's just... hard, you know? He's still my dad. Justin's voice was low, mixed with a turmoil of emotions. It is hard, and it's okay to feel torn. But we need to move forward, for your future, for our peace. My words were as much to reassure Justin as they were to convince myself. Back in his world of high stakes and boardroom battles, Jack faced the music alone. His last-ditch effort, a risky investment in a tech startup, had failed disastrously. I heard through the grapevine that his company was floundering, investors pulling out, the stock prices tumbling. He's calling again? Justin held out his phone, showing Jack's name flashing on the screen. Let it go to voicemail, I suggested knowing that engaging might reopen old wounds we were just starting to heal. Emily, I need your help. Everything's falling apart. I don't know what to do. Another voicemail played, Jack's voice desperate, a stark contrast to the confident, often arrogant tones we were used to. His problems aren't ours anymore, Justin. We can't fix what he broke, not this time. I know, but it feels weird, you know? Seeing him like this. Justin bit his lip, conflicted. 
It's a consequence of his actions, of the choices he made. We've got our own path now, feeling the weight of our new life settling around me. Do you think he'll ever understand? Understand why we had to leave? Maybe, maybe not. Understanding doesn't always lead to change, though. And we needed change. I walked over to the window, looking out at the quiet street below. In the following days, news of Jack's downfall spread. His once thriving business was now in shambles, the offices empty, the halls silent. His professional network, once a mighty asset, evaporated when he needed support the most. The few friends who stayed by him could do little to stem the tide of failure. He's lost almost everything. It's like, he's a different person now. Sometimes losing everything is the only way to realize what you had. I just hope he learns from it for his sake. I replied, thinking of the many times Jack had prioritized his ambition over us, over Justin. As we continued to rebuild, finding small joys in our daily lives, Justin in his art, and me in my newfound freedom, the contrast to Jack's isolation and despair was stark. It was a hard lesson about pride and fall, about what truly mattered in life. Mom, do you ever miss him? Sometimes, but I miss the man I thought he was, not the man he became. My answer was honest, tinged with a sadness for the past, but also with hope for the future. As we moved forward, leaving Jack to navigate the ruins of his empire, I held Justin close, our bond strengthened by the trials we had overcome. The road ahead was uncertain, but together, we had each other, and that was more than enough. Can you believe we're actually here in Paris? My old college friend Linda swung her arms wide, almost embracing the city from our balcony. It's like a dream, isn't it? I leaned against the railing, taking in the sunrise that painted the Parisian skyline in hues of gold and pink. After everything, this freedom feels almost surreal. You deserved a fresh start, Emily. After all that with Jack, you deserve all of this. Her smile warm. Thank you, Linda. It's been a journey, hasn't it? From college dreams to this new chapter... Speaking of new chapters, how's Justin? His last message about the gallery exhibit sounded exciting. Linda's inquiry brought a proud smile to my face. He's thriving. His latest series sold out almost immediately. It's like he's finally found his place, you know? The thought of Justin succeeding on his own terms filled me with a deep sense of peace. That's all you ever wanted for him, to find his happiness. Linda observed, her tone gentle. Exactly. And speaking of happiness... How about we explore more of Paris today? I think we're due a visit to the Louvre, don't you think? I proposed, eager to immerse myself further into the city's art and history. As we spent the day wandering through galleries and charming Parisian streets, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders, a contrast stark against the backdrop of the past years. The art, the culture, it was revitalizing, reminding me of who I was before the struggles. Later, as evening fell, Justin called, his voice was vibrant, enthusiastic. Mom, you won't believe the crowd at the exhibit. I wish you could have seen it. I'm so proud of you, Justin. Keep following your passion. Keep shining. My words were sincere, filled with the love and hope I held for his future. I will, Mom. And how's Paris? Promise me you'll enjoy every moment, okay? Justin's concern was touching, making me smile. I promise, sweetheart. Hanging up. I felt a surge of gratitude for the path we had chosen. Tough, but true to ourselves. That night I stood again on the balcony, looking out over the city as it lit up under the night sky. Thoughts of Jack crossed my mind. His downfall, a distant, sobering echo of past choices. He had watched from afar, his once formidable life unraveled. I knew he had learned something vital about love and letting go, but that lesson had come too late for us. It was a chapter closed, a part of my life sealed away with its own memories and lessons. Here's to new beginnings, Emily. To freedom, and finding ourselves again. Linda joined me with a glass of wine, her presence a comforting reminder of the support I had. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking my glass against hers. My heart was light, my future unwritten but brimming with promise, a testament to resilience, to the triumph of nurturing over control. The story of Emily, Justin, and Jack has come to a close, with each character finding their own path in the aftermath of their decisions. Now, I have a question for you.
Do you think personal happiness should be prioritized over traditional measures of success, like wealth and career prestige? Why or why not? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear different perspectives on this. And if you enjoyed this story and want to see more, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content like this. Your support means a lot.